Another way of writing our supposition here uh, is in the modular arithmetic form, uh, x cubed plus y cubed, x, y, and z being integers. And integers are just the positive and negative integers. Whoops, that's z cubed. Okay, now another way to write this statement here, 9 divides the sum x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, is to write down x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is congruent to zero, mod nine. Mod is an abbreviation for uh, modulo. So let's keep that in mind. In other words, that we're assuming uh, that uh, x, y, and z are integers, and that nine divides the sum of their cubes. Okay, and we want to show that at least one of the x, y, z's, not the x, y, z cubed, is divisible by three. Okay, you have nine here, you have three here. And so this is what we're trying to prove. Okay, now let's move along. Now we're gonna, we're gonna do a proof by contradiction here. Sometimes that's just easiest. Notice right here it says, uh, prove that at least one of x, y, and z is divisible by three. Well, we're gonna assume that none of these guys, x, y, and z is divisible by three. See, so we have none See, at least one could be one, two, or three, right? But the negation of that, the logical negation of that is that none of them are divisible by three. So we, we'll, we'll see if we get a contradiction, which will prove, prove what we're trying to prove, okay? So uh, it follows from the assumption that none of the integers is divisible by nine, and that's crystal clear, right? Because this assumption we made, if, it's, if they're not divisible by three, they can't be divisible by nine because three is a divisor of nine, right? and divisibility is what they call transitive. So this follows immediately from this supposition or this assumption, okay? And again, writing this in modular arithmetic form, we're gonna write this as x, y, and z are not divisible by zero modulo nine, okay? Are not congruent to zero mod nine. All right, again, this, you can write this in multiple ways. I, I like doing the modular arithmetic approach. So our, our supposition implies, and that's what we just wrote down um, up here at the beginning, x cubed plus y cubed is congruent to zero modulo nine. All right, so what, what's left now is to do some calculations. Um, what I do is I zero cubed, one cubed, two cubed. Now notice you get to three cubed, 27 is congruent to zero, right? Because 27 is a multiple. And we're talking modulo nine here, folks. Let me write this down. I should be writing this, this is modulo nine. Okay, so 27 is congruent to zero since uh, 27 minus zero divided by nine is three. Four cubed is congruent, uh, is equal to 64, which is congruent to one because 64 is equal to uh, nine times seven plus one. Okay, uh, this is sometimes called remainder arithmetic. You're working with the remainders. And you guys can verify uh, two, all of these. You, you can check out these calculations right here. Uh, but they all work out nicely. And what we get is that we have the only possible remainders are 0, uh, 1, and 8. Now, that's kind of a useful fact here. Notice we, all, we, we only get 0. You see you got to have 1 here. You have 8, 0, 1. Uh, here's another appearance of 8, 0, one and then eight again you see so when you divide by nine you always get remainders of either zero one or eight but notice that we uh we're, we're claiming that we we can't allow for zero right that, that's the assumption here okay we're assuming that none of the integers is divisible by three so we have to rule out the congruent by zero piece right so the only possibilities here or just one and eight. You see, zero was ruled out by by our assumption, uh, our contradiction assumption, right? So the only possibilities would be one and eight. And notice that you don't ever get, uh, like for example, eight plus eight plus eight is equal to 24, right? And what is that congruent to? Uh, Modulo 9. Well, 2 times 9 is 18, so that would be congruent to 6, right? Okay. Now let's try some other proof.
pro, you know, we don't have to worry about zero again. We just worry about eights and ones, right? So let's try eight plus eight plus one. Okay, what is that? That's equal to 17. But when you divide that by nine, you get a remainder of eight. Uh, when you divide 17 by nine, you get a remainder of eight. So you see now we have eight right here. And you guys, you could probably already see all the, uh, you'll do all these combinations. Let me come over here and write some more. What if we have eight plus one plus one? That's a possibility, right? That's equal to 10, but 10 leaves a remainder of one when you divide it by nine. So 10 is congruent to one modulo nine. And our last try here would be one plus one plus one, which is of course just three. You don't have to do any work on that. It's equal to three, which is congruent to three. So you see folks, we, all the combinations here of, of one and eight, ruling out zero again, um, led to a circumstance that uh, gave us a contradiction, right? We got, again, we got one, three, six, and eight, right? And, uh, but we, we made the, our supposition implies, uh, you know, we contradiction, we contradicted our original supposition here. See, we contradicted our original supposition. And so that means uh, that, that uh, it happened, it's true because we, we assumed something that led to a contradiction and that the reductio ad absurdum argument means that nine, uh, I mean, that means that we must have one of them that is divisible by three, okay? Uh, so uh, we, we, right here again, we prove by contradiction by assuming that none of the integers is divisible by three, right? Okay, well, we got a contradiction when we made that assumption, we contradicted this fact. So that means at least one is divisible by three, okay? That's kind of like the contrapositive element. It's not quite the same, I don't think. Some people think it is in some cases. Uh, we have at least, at least one, okay? Because we made an assumption that at least one is divisible by three since we got a contradiction when we assume that none was divisible by three. Okay, so hopefully that's convincing for you folks. So we can write down QED right now. And you know, sorry, that's, that's supposed to say at least one. So that completes the proof. And I think that's fair. I think we covered all the cases right here. Eight, eight, and eight is congruent to six. Eight, eight, and one is congruent to eight. And again, you guys can verify that I didn't make any mistakes on the arithmetic there. Uh, and so I thought it was a nice little proof right here. And again, if you want to verify some of these, go right ahead. Uh, seven cubed is congruent to one because if you if you divide uh, 343 by nine, you get a remainder of one. And again, you guys can verify all that. And I think right here for 916, for 216, what do you get there? Is it 216 nine times 36? Or no, I'm sorry, nine times 26, right? Nine times uh, 20, let's see, nine times 20 is 180, right? Nine times 24, okay? Nine times 24 is 216, right? Nine times 24 is 180 plus uh, 36 is 216. All right, and so we get that to be a multiple of nine, which makes it congruent to zero. And again, the rest of this is just some arithmetic that you can go through and verify if you think I made a mistake. Similarly for 125. But again, that was nice that we just got zero, one, and eight, and we could rule out zero uh, since we assumed uh, that none of the integers is divisible by three. Okay, so uh, anyway, I hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that made a little bit of sense, and uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Oh, by the way, this came from uh, Pierre, what's this guy's name? Uh, he was a famous number theorist back in 1970. Uh, it, read the description. A very well-known number theorist. He wrote a problem, a book with 250 problems with very well, with very good solutions uh, posted at the, at the end. It's a PDF out there on the web if you want to look it up. Uh, I, sorry, I can't remember his last name right now, but it's in the description of the video. So check it out. You can find a lot of interesting problems there. Okay, thanks for viewing.